You're on. Hi everyone, I am here with your bio reading. I hope you guys are all having a good day. The sun's shining here. Really? Yeah. How can you tell? Because I looked out the window. When? When I was in the bedroom. When was that? Hours ago. So how do you know that the sun's shining? I don't hear a ring. How do you know? I don't know. You don't know, do you? No, I don't know. No, you don't know if it's raining or it's snowing, do you? No. Okay, guys, um, today we're going to be reading the following. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, all of chapter 5. We'll be talking about a case of incest in Corinthians chapter okay. 5. Psalm 31, verses 1 through 8, so just part of the psalm. Okay. And Proverbs chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. If you keep it up, I'm going to make you get your book out and follow along. You can't read! Get your book out. What book? Okay. Not that. Your Chapter bite. five, right here. Being sassed. Case of incest. In case you don't know what incest is, which I'm sure most of you do, um, it's two people in the same family ha having sex with one another, <laughs> like a like a brother and a sister, a mother or a, mother. a brother and sister having sex together, or a father and daughter, a mother and son. Ew. Yeah, stuff like Heck. that. That's against the law. Yuck. Some places will let you marry, uh, but Yuck. they don't allow that here. Yuck. Go to prison. Ew. So let's get started here with um, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Now back in the Bible days, if you were an adulterer, if you cheated on your husband or your wife, they would stone you to death. They would kill you. Today, people just do it like it's nothing. Well, you cheated on me, so I'm going to go out and cheat on you too for revenge. And that just makes it a hundred million times even worse. You're neither one of you are going to trust the other ever again. And people do it today like it's not a sin. But it is a sin. And you'll learn that right now in the Bible today. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that even pagans do not tolerate. Shouldn't you rather... Wait. A man is sleeping with his father's wife. Now, we don't know if this is his stepmother or his birth mother because this says his father's wife. But even if it is your stepmother, you shouldn't be sleeping with her because she is married into the family now. They're not married, they're not related by blood, but she's still don't sleep with your father's wife or your wife's husband. That's just a sin. That's really wrong. And that is adultery. And a man is sleeping with his father's wife and you are proud. They were proud about it. They were not in the slightest bit worried or anything. They were proud to flaunt it. Shouldn't you rather have gone into mourning and have put out of your fellowship the man who has been doing this? For my part, even though I am not physically present, this is Paul speaking, by the way, I am with you in spirit. As one who is present with you in this way, I have already passed judgment in the name of our Lord Jesus. On the one who has been doing this, so when you are assembled and I am with you in spirit and the power of our Lord Jesus is present, hand this man over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral, 
or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave this world. But now I am writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister, but is sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater or slanderer, a drunkard or swindler. Do not even eat with such people. What business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked person from among you. And that is where we're stopping with 1 Corinthians today. That was chapter 5, all of chapter 5. And now we're just going to read a little bit of Psalm 31, for the director of music, a Psalm of David, verses 1 through 8. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock and refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. As for me, I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love. For you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not given me into the hands of the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. And that was verses 1 through 8 of Psalm 31. And now we have two Proverbs today. Proverbs chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. In the Lord's hand, the king's heart is a stream of water that he channels toward all who please him. A person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. It's like I said many times, the Lord knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in your mind. You can't hide nothing from the Lord. People on this earth can be easily fooled. You can make them believe anything, but you can't do that to the Lord because the Lord knows you better than anybody. You are his child. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows what's in your heart right now. He knows if whatever you're speaking from your mouth is true to the way your heart feels or not. Can't hide nothing from God. Okay, guys, that was um, our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your hearts. I did get Sherm's pictures um, put in the book. This one was too big to put in the book. We was wanting to frame it with some matting and stuff, and um, we had somebody we wanted to give it to. If I could find a frame to put it in, because I'm not really sure what you'd consider the size. It's not an 8 by 10 because it's too wide. I don't know, and a 10 by 13 would be too big. I just ain't sure. Do you guys have any idea? Put it in the comments below if you do. And I would definitely check it out. Alright, let's go through the prayer request and then I'll show you the pictures. Please keep Rhonda Karshner and Abby Myers in your prayers. Not yet. They will um, no. They will be losing their home soon, so we want to pray that they find another one, that it's ready for them to move in. They both have very hard lives. Please keep in prayer Sherman Crabtree. He's been having some new pains in his arm since he started the therapy, and I told him that's probably what it was from the therapy, you know, getting his muscles working back again and stuff. And he goes to therapy today, this afternoon. Please pray for Michael Cairns. He has Crohn's disease. Please pray for Logan Cairns. He has leg pain and then pain in the knee on the opposite leg. They did an MRI thinking that they was going to find a torn ligament in his knee, but it didn't show anything like that. So he's just going to be going to therapy. So please keep him in prayer. Please pray for April and Linda Thacker. Please pray for Judy Thompson, Barb Post, Judy Osborne, Zach Kirby, 
Dora Parker, Cindy Welsh, Jim Welsh, Elizabeth Jeffries, and Jim Mitchell. Remember I told you we hadn't seen Jim since his daughter passed away? And we seen him yesterday when he was coming back from the store and he was sitting outside. It's the first time we've seen him since his daughter passed away and he went to church last night too. So he's getting back out again. So that's really good. Okay guys, that was everything for today. Oh, pictures. <laughs> See how my mind is? I want to get so easy. All right. One of my favorite ones, the Wishing Well Sherm did. I love this. And I love this one too. He did us a hot air balloon. And a black wolf, that is Sherm's favorite. He loves black wolves. Hope is stronger than fear. So true, and so is faith. Okay. This one I really like. Oh, happy day. And then Sherman did this one for me because I like unicorns. It was actually a color by number, this one. And I think that's it for now. Yep, that's the last one for now, guys. So Sherm's working on another picture now. I will put it in the book for tomorrow to show you guys if, you know, God willing, and if Sherm gets it done and stuff. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow, hopefully, God willing, with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Losing these color looking crowns. I'm losing my mind. I'm going mad. Yes, I am. Bye, guys.